Rocky Mountain Sasquatch Organization. This Bigfoot sighting report is from Minnesota. Del Olson writes RMSO. If you would like to see your Bigfoot sighting on our channel, please email us at rmsobigfoot at gmail.com. This is what Dell writes. In Minnesota, I had my closest encounter with Bigfoot, I believe. Depends on how you choose to word it, I guess. Anyway, it was winter during the tail end of deer hunting, and I was on my cousin's property. It's near an abandoned car lot. It had a ravine, or it was behind it with a steep bank on the other side of the ravine, was a low area that we had tilled up and planted corn for cropland and used it for pheasant and deer hunting. Also, we planted three rows of pine 20 years prior from saplings that had filled our property pretty well. It was the last chance for hunting. It was the last day. I wanted a deer. I had already got my buck and doe. I was on an extra doe hunt that I put in for. My cousin had decided to not go because he was being a puss as it was cold. I figured I might get lucky and fill his tag as well. I went out very early. I figured with the wind in the dark, I could be out there sitting long before they moved through the neighboring field that they would go lay in to be in the daylight sun. So I was sitting in my spot two hours before sunrise. I had good insulated coveralls and Sorel boots with neoprene socks. So the cold wasn't really an issue, even with the wind. I figured I would button up my face mask for an hour, and then well before daylight, prepare for a shot. I could ride out the last hour in the cold with the face mask off and one glove with one hand in my pocket till I saw something. I got in my spot. I was concealed well by pine trees from direct travel. I would hear them even if the wind long before I saw them as the snow had a real good ice crust on it from the past warmer days. After about an hour I heard some crunching and thought maybe it was later than an hour as I wasn't expecting them to move yet but I thought well they are probably just snacking some corn before laying down. So I undid my face mask and moved a bit to get some fresh blood to my legs as I needed to sit tight for now till after my shot. Then I heard and noticed that what I was hearing was some more deliberate and was bipedal walking. I was, oh crap, my cousin is coming in from the carlet side, ruining my hunt. I was ready to pack it and give him hell. Then it paused and moved in a different direction. I thought, WTH. I told him exactly where I would be. I was getting more pissed because it was like, he was ensuring I wouldn't get a shot because he was walking through the corn and would take long stops and then would go again for a ways. I wouldn't see him or anything. I was just assuming by the sound of it, then it came back to where it had been for a minute, back to where it had been before going into the corn and stood there for a while. I was about to yell, over here, dummy. Then it started walking again. It was still a good half hour before the first thread of dawn would show. So when I looked straight in front of me, I could see the tops of the trees across the rest of the field. I could see the last pine tree on my left from the pines we had planted. It was about 10 to 15 feet away. The field rose up to my right and there was a tree line there as well. But it was pretty much just like looking at a black wall at this point in time. The wind was whipping cold from the right to the left at about a 45 degree angle. I heard it walking towards the end pine on my left and I was thinking, well, if this isn't my cousin, it was a perfect setup to take a shot if I could see anything of it at all because there would be no way it could scent me with the wind picking up like this. Now I know it would have been an early shot, too early. But I had it in my mind that if a nice one could be seen, I would take the shot as no houses for like a mile. And with the wind and the early time, 
There was no fool out there or anywhere near earshot but me. So I sat and waited. I kept hoping for the sun to hurry and rise as I could barely make out this side of the pine tree on the left, let alone the other side of it. As I was waiting for the deer or my cousin, I had my shotgun pointed up now. I figured if it was a deer, I would just drop the barrel and drop the deer. Anyway, it hesitated at the pine tree. I figured it could be my cousin looking for me, or it could still be a deer, as it was the last cover for about 60 yards till the next tree line. I knew, even though I was only like 20 to 30 feet away, it couldn't scent me on the wind, so I just sat still. Then it stepped out from the tree. I saw movement, but I couldn't see what it was yet. I just saw black movement against the black tree shapes as it was a little farther away from the last pine than I had thought and judging by the sound. The tree line on the other side of the field was four or five trees thick with undergrowth. I could see a little difference between the trees, but not much, so I could see something move, but that was about it. Then I noticed something real odd, so out of the norm, I couldn't understand what I was seeing. It totally freaked me out. I was frozen, but more like out of confusion than fear. I was baffled. Whatever was walking in front of me, just a mere 25 to 30 feet away, it was carrying at least three deer, as I could see their heads and necks above the tree line from the other side of the field, silhouetted on the night sky, from where I was, to where I guessed it was my angle of vision would put the treetops at about 10 feet. I don't know how tall it was. The thing carrying those three deer like a brown bag of groceries, but I could see the neck and head of the two does and one buck. The buck with its head sitting very oddly on the neck of the being carrying it across the field. My first thought I was like, is this another hunter carrying decoys? Then I was like, WTH, that hunter would have to be nine and a half feet tall and why is he carrying them up in the wind like that most anybody would be using a sled if they had that much gear to carry otherwise they would need to make three or four trips i was thinking i gotta shoot i am letting these deer walk right in front of me but at the same time i was thinking crap it's another hunter with decoy my hunt is done i was thinking this makes no sense nobody is that tall then it stopped, midway between the last pine tree on the left and the tree line on the right. I started to feel fear. Then because I was trying to convince myself that it was just another hunter with decoys and I was losing that argument, it had got to the point where I could no longer see the three deer silhouetted against the sky. They was well as the carrier had melted into the darkness of the wood line on the right. I knew it hadn't seen or smelled me but I had the feeling it realized something was in the area. I don't know. Maybe it could see me. But with the wind blowing as it was, I could smell it as well as the blood. I assume from the deer. It was a bad smell. In my mind, I was still trying to convince myself this huge fellow hunter had just killed three deer and was carrying them across the dark field which is ridiculous to say or think now, but my mind was grasping at this point. I knew what it was, but I didn't want to accept it. It did a yell growl, and in my mind, all I could visualize was big teeth. As soon as dawn started, I could make out everything inside the tree lines. I was up and out of there and didn't hunt again until I moved to Arizona. Never have I gone alone since and never out in the dark hunt. Just couldn't pay me enough for that. Thanks for your time. This occurred in the area between New London and Sumburg, close to Wilmar area. Hi, Dell. This is Kelly Shaw responding. Thank you for sending in your Bigfoot sighting report. These are very important to us. Um, it shows the amount of sightings, shows how common the phenomenon is. 
These are very important for researchers and enthusiasts to get an idea of where the creatures live, what they eat, what they do, and how many of them there are. I mean, just amazing. Nine and a half feet tall carrying three deer. I don't know a person, a single person, that could pack two deer. It's difficult enough to just to pack one, but three deer, I don't think you were looking at a nine foot tall person, neither does anyone else. An amazing sighting report from out of Minnesota. We really appreciate it. I hope everybody enjoyed this. If you have a sighting report of your own, make sure that you email it to us at rmsobigfoot at gmail.com. Keep on watching. We're going to keep on squatching.